In this video, I'm going to be reviewing volume number two of the paranormal psychological thriller light novel series, The Empty Box and the Zeroth Maria. Hello everybody and welcome to my review of volume number two of A.G. Makage's light novel series, The Empty Box and the Zeroth Maria. This one is released by Yen on in English. If you want to pick up your own copy, I do have links in the description to Amazon.com or the book depository. Using those links, they are affiliate links, they help the channel out, so I really do appreciate making use of them. Now this volume pretty much picks up where we left off with volume number one. Maria is now enrolled in Kazuki's school. And the two of them are pursuing the enigmatic figure known as O, who is supplying people boxes that enable their wishes. In this volume, we have a very different setup. Volume number one, of course, was sort of the Groundhog Day type of looping, you know, several days over and over and over again. An interesting mechanic in the way that it was used in volume number one, this one has to do with the stealing of identities and the misunderstandings and hatred that can result from those sorts of actions. This series is very, very concerned with the whole idea of identity, and it really plays out in a big way in this volume. In volume number one, we could say that part of the idea there was not to lose one's identity, not to lose one's self. In this one, we actually have the opposite of that theme and idea, which is to try and escape from yourself, to try and become someone who is different and, in your eyes, better off than yourself. It's trying to escape who you are. And in this way, this volume is very successful in terms of taking that theme and pretty much deconstructing it and turning it a bit on its head. And we have a whole bunch of characters that are all sort of dedicated to these ideas. Of course, we have Maria who acknowledges that she is a box and that she has a certain mission. And this book in some ways has to do with her journey in terms of how dedicated is she to that mission when it comes to potentially throwing away this friendship that she and Kazuki have started to foster between one another. In the case of Kazuki, we have a character who is very much invested in trying to keep his life as normal as possible. And the question is just how much of that normalcy will he sacrifice in order to maintain any sense of his life or self. There's a number of other characters that this all this whole theme sort of plays into. And I will say that unlike the first volume, which really kept me guessing near to near right at the end in terms of just who the owner of the box was, in this one, I pretty much had it guessed well in advance of the reveal. Although I will say that regardless of that fact, there were still a couple of little twists and turns through the volume and up to the very end that certainly kept me engaged and kept me invested in what was happening. Uh, the volume is relatively short. It's only about 186 pages or so. Uh, in that case, you know, like the, the plotting in volume one and the plotting in this book very, very well executed. Um, nothing really feels useless or like it's just padding out the story. The, the story progresses at a steady and even pace. There's always new sort of revelations and ideas that keep you interested. And regardless of whether you sort of figure out certain things early on, it doesn't really matter because there's still lots to sort of discover and to try and figure out just what our heroes are going to do to make this all work. Part of what makes this series really work is the interplay between Kazuki and Maria. These are two really interesting characters and it's, it's funny because Kazuki is 
interesting because of just how normal he is, which I think is pretty counterintuitive to a lot of the other things that we have said in terms of criticisms of light novel protagonists in other series. But in this series where pretty much nobody is normal and almost everybody seems that they have something within themselves and within their life that they would take advantage of O's boxes in order to fulfill a wish, Kazuki sort of sticks out as being this odd character that... His pursuit of normalcy, his pursuit of maintaining the status quo, of of finding comfort levels and remaining in them, it actually seems like a very interesting and stark contrast to what we see going on in the world around him, especially because, of course, he becomes involved in these very abnormal events that pretty much throw the idea of a normal life on its head. In addition to that, we then have Maria, who is this very strong female character. I liked how in this book, and I mean, we saw it a little bit in volume one, but I'd say definitely we see it here too. I like that there's still an element of vulnerability to her. There is still an element of a sweet girl underneath this whole hard exterior and, you know, this, this intelligent girl who is constantly calculating moves ahead and trying to unravel mysteries all in her own mind, just as she's sort of going through the motions. And you, you kind of have to like a, a, a female character who's the one that's the actual strong arm in the relationship, uh, you know, pulling like judo moves and everything else. I found it was kind of interesting, though, too, that... You know, we come out of volume number one, and of course, you know, there are, uh, I've got spoilers in this video for volume number one. There's no way to really talk about this volume without sort of spoiling some of that. Volume number one, of course, we have this repeating classroom and we have Maria and Kazuki sort of developing these skills and everything else in this relationship over that time period. But what we end up finding out is that for both of them, Kazuki far more so than Maria, once they've come out of that, they actually are starting to forget. Kazuki in particular, like I said, he is forgetting even more because he is not, has never been an owner of a box. Whereas Maria herself is pretty much a box that she is still retaining a lot more of what that experience was. And it's interesting to see the slight tension that comes up in their relationship because of Kazuki's forgetfulness of some of the things and moments that they shared. And, you know, having like a little bit of ignorance in terms of why certain things he says affect Maria in a certain way. It'll, it like... This book has some really actually decent character building to it, on top of being a really well-paced mystery. And like I said, even though the, I would say the one bigger mystery of like who owns the box, that was a big thing in volume number one, and it kept me guessing right till near the end. This one I figured it out, but I still really enjoyed the book, and I still found that there were things that surprised me along the way. There is one thing that I just, I, I have to point out, and it, it's kind of an interesting, well, it's kind of a funny thing, I guess, maybe. Um, Sean Gaffney is another light novel reviewer. He uh, he does it in a blog format as opposed to here on YouTube. Um, and he tweeted out while he was reading this, he's like, excellently written, really great pace, and yet I still find that I'm not enjoying myself. And I saw that tweet before I actually started reading this. And it made me a little bit concerned because I thought, oh, you know, like I really enjoyed the first one. I just, you know, how a lot of people had said to me the volume two is one of the weaker volumes in the series. And so I kind of thought, oh, like just how much of a fallback is this? Um, what I kind of found when I finished this book is I don't think it, I'm not going to say that this is what Sean meant. You know, I, I didn't really press him on the matter, but um what I kind of realized after I finished reading this, I was like, you know what? I, I can see that. As I said, it is well written. It is well paced. And yet you can't really say the book is fun. <laughs> um, 
you know, we've had some discussion actually about like with, uh, previous books that we've done like Goblin Slayer and Overlord, darker, more serious type light novels. And, uh, I think it's Aaron DeBourg was talking about, uh, comic relief and how you need sort of that bit of comic relief in a book. And there's not a lot of that in this series. We get a little taste of it kind of towards the end. There's little bits here and there, but, um, I would not say that this book is really filled with those kinds of things there. It is quite serious throughout. And, and I mean, rightfully so, like we, like I said, we are talking about individuals that are incredibly damaged. Um, I, I almost at times kind of wonder just if Kazuki himself is damaged like worse than anybody and that's why he wants a normal life and it's something that we're just as an audience ignorant of i i'm not too sure but um but it really is like dark and and like i said you know the the justifications for these owners of the boxes to go to these extremes they do make sense when you get their backstory revealed. You, you, you don't, you don't find yourself like you find yourself sympathetic to the villain. You don't find yourself sitting there going, eh, you know, you're just being a bad guy for the sake of being a bad guy, or you're just this for that. Or like, you know what I mean? Like you, you do sympathize. You actually do kind of understand what their purpose is behind all of this. And so much of it boils down to like fear and, you know, and, and self-loathing in a sense. And like, these are not sort of themes that are enjoyable. And again, I'm not even saying that that's what Sean meant, but, but I, but I think like when I finished it, I was like, you know what? I, I liked the book. I thought the book was really good. I truly am looking forward to continuing with this series, but at the same time, do you have fun and, and in this volume, I kind of had to say, eh, not, not, not really like, but it, it's fairly bleak. And, and as I said, it's kind of heartbreaking as you move ahead and you work through the different things that are going on and you find out the backstory of sort of the, the other characters that are involved. It, it really is not an uplifting, fun, happy time kind of story. And there's not a lot of that break in terms of the tension even certain things that make you go well that could have come off comedic but it still does doesn't feel that way um in fact i would okay i i i gotta admit like sometimes i'm a nine-year-old boy and you know some things just strike me as being funny because you know you can grow up but sometimes you just can't get out of that potty humor and like <laughs> i i almost wish they had called it something other than a box because Kazuki, like at one point is like, Maria, let me touch your box. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, sh I should edit this out of the video, but I just, you know, like, <laughs> like it's almost like, I think that, you know what? I think that's, that's the thing. Like there's not a lot of comedic relief in this book. So when I read that, that like eight or nine year old little boy that still kind of lives somewhere in the back of my head was like, <laughs> touch your box again. <laughs> And, and it was just such a weird experience because there was really nothing in that moment that was in any way serious. Like it was it like, it like in any way funny. Like it was very, very serious. It was very dark. And, and I was just like, wow, wow. So maybe I was looking for, <laughs> looking for that little bit of comedy. I don't know. Um, so all in all, you know what? Like, so volume two, I, I'm going to say like, I liked it. I, I liked volume number two. I, I really didn't think it was as significant a drop in terms of quality that I was prepared for. Definitely. I don't think that the mystery around the whole thing was quite as tightly plotted, but at the same time, I almost get the sense that that wasn't really the point, that the point was more just unraveling these relationships and, and the ways that people view themselves. I, I think that was more the point than the first one, which was very much about that sort of mystery and jumping back and around and forth and forward and back and, 
everything else to keep you kind of disoriented. This is very linear. It's it's the exact opposite. In fact, we we have dates and times that are moving the story forward. So it, it's a very different reading experience than what we had in volume number one, but I think it still works. And as I said, I think these central themes are still harmonious across at least these first two volumes. And I am very interested to see where volume number three goes because this one kind of ends on a little bit of a cliffhanger. It's not a crazy huge cliffhanger, but certainly enough that makes you go, oh man, what's going to happen next? So volume number two of The Empty Box and the Zeroth Maria. Again, it's not a series that's really like anything else that we're getting, which is pretty awesome. Uh, pretty good little mysteries to it. Like I said, this one's a little bit more predictable than the volume number one, but still lots of emotional payoff as you progress through the book to still make it worth reading. If you're looking for something that's going to have you laughing, though, not the book to read unless, you know, you can have those moments where you act like an immature little boy and laugh at stuff that probably really wasn't meant to be laughed at. And, uh, yeah, so, so there you go. Those are my thoughts on this volume and I do look forward to volume number three. My next review is going to be on one of the ongoing series that I've been keeping up with. I'm trying to get myself kind of caught up because quite a number of these series are getting their next volumes in April, which, man, we are very quickly approaching. And so I'm going to be reading volume number nine of The Devil is a Part-Timer. Volume number eight left on quite the cliffhanger, so I'm looking forward to giving this one a read and seeing where... You know, these characters that I have really come to enjoy, seeing where they end up in this book. So if you're brand new to the channel and you love light novels, you should subscribe. I do two to three reviews every week, as well as a weekly countdown of the top 10 best-selling light novels in Japan. Thank you so much for joining me in this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.